Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 19th meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. Let me first note that this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, as authorized by New York State Legislation Bill A8591, which amended the open meetings law and was signed by Governor Kathy Hochul last Friday. As part of that, let me first confirm that each board member present tonight is alone so that there's no one theoretically standing over you trying to influence how you'll be voting. Ms. Weiser? I'm alone. Mr. Waters? I'm alone. Mr. Oliver? You're still muted, Chris. I've just asked, He's, he can't unmute, he needs to be made a co-host. I am alone. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Kane, can you unmute? Victoria will also need to be a co-host. Thank you. Please join me as we pledge allegiance to the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Peter, can you make Bonnie Franson also a co-host for me? Thank you. The first item on the agenda is a new public hearing. This is a project styled Disabled Veterans Bee Farm. The applicant, Mr. Beltier, is proposing to add several beehives around his uh, very large site, as well as a corral that would house horses during the day. In both cases, the horses are led by Bye. veterans and the bees would be tended to by veterans as well. Mr. Pelletier, do you wanna to add to this? No, it's, I thought we were <laughs> good from last week. Okay, then let me start with uh, board members. Anything to add, um, Mr. Waters? Not at this time, no. Ms. Weiser? Can you not unmute? No, I can now. I, no, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Oliver? I also have nothing to add. And neither do I. But in the interim, we did receive a rather detailed and lengthy letter from the Crumb Elbow Sportsman's Association. And Mr. Chris Algozin is here tonight to present a summary of that. Chris, can you unmute yourself? Do we, we open the hearing? Oh, make it a motion. Open, uh, I will move to open the public hearing. Thank you. I'll Thank second you. that, Chris Oliver. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries with our bare minimum of quorum tonight. Now, Chris, Mr. Algozin, would you like to offer comments? Sorry about that. Hi there. My name is Chris Algazin. I'm president of Crum Elbow Sportsman's Association Incorporated located at 57 Cardinal Road and with an adjoining property at 77 Cardinal Road. Both properties border Chris Pelletier's land and we received notice from the planning board, thank you very much, of his application for site plan changes. We have concerns about the application, which as you stated, Michael, he, we have detailed in writing to the planning board. So I'll simply just summarize them for the benefit of all in attendance at tonight's meeting. First, we trust that the planning board will enforce any and all town codes specific to the placement of fencing for a corral, placement of bee box structures, and location of a corral with respect to any setbacks from wetlands on his and our property. We didn't see any details in the site plan application as required covering alterations to and construction of any new roadways or access paths required to build and maintain these new structures which may adversely affect wetlands, which could be a violation of town codes and New York State DEC wetland laws. And we trust in the legal responsibility the town has to protect wetlands and that the planning board will take these matters into consideration. New York, D New York State DEC has already informed Chris in the application that he submitted that he cannot build or install bee boxes in the wetlands unless they're suspended in trees. The site plan application provides no details for how this will be done and we have several concerns about this suspended in trees construction approach, which we know the planning board will also be concerned with. We believe the current usage designation of Chris's land, which is rural undeveloped, is inaccurate since his site plan application shows clearly he has a house on the land. He also states in the application that he has a well drilled on the land. This implies there's electric service and septic. If no previous site plan application was ever approved by this planning board, and we could find none in the public record, 
then we would like to know if the planning board is going to be allowing this site application to cover all of those changes and therefore ask that any and all town codes are enforced with respect to a home well septic and electric services being introduced as well as any necessary change of usage designation to perhaps residential or something more appropriate. Finally, we ask that the planning board look closely at this plan and perhaps see what we see. Namely, that it makes no sense to place individual bee boxes unprotected from predators spread very specifically around the very boundary of our properties or to place a horse corral immediately adjacent and in the closest spot he could find on his land to a noisy rifle range on the side of a rocky ledge. And despite owning 113 acres, he's placing all of these sensitive assets in such close proximity to our gun ranges for what we believe the sole purpose of being able to complain later about noise. By approving this plan, we wonder what liability the planning board might be assigning to the town of Hyde Park and what message we are sending to a landowner who seems obviously bent on creating a bad situation one that he will be causing by his own actions if this site plan is approved as submitted. Thank you for your time and consideration of our concerns. I hope I kept it to three minutes. <laughs> um, number one, Chris, we don't uh, enforce that here. Um, it's more of a town board rule. I, if you wanna speak on, you're, you're certainly welcome to. There were a couple of items from your comments and your longer letter that I wanted to address though real quickly. Um, first, the Building of the house does not require a site plan. It requires a subdivision approval, and this was subdivided years and years and years ago. Um, so it wouldn't trigger anything from the planning board. All he has to do is pull a building permit. There are some areas of town where residential, active, uh, residential construction does require a site plan. We typically waive that, but not in this instance. Um, and I, I did understand why you were thinking about that because when Tad first showed me this, Ms. Moss, I had no idea there was anything back there at all. I thought it was just a big empty uh, big acreage. In terms of the wetlands, this is gonna sound strange to you, but it's something that we've all encountered up here on the planning board. The DEC prioritizes, along with New York State is what I should say, agriculture over almost anything. Um, by that, I mean, when you have endangered, threatened and rare species, such as Blenning's turtles or anything else, there's a prohibition on when you can cut trees, you have to avoid sensitive habitat, et cetera. If you say, I wanna put a farm there, that seems to trump all the other concerns. I, don't, I can't tell you why, um, but that's, that's the way the DEC operates. They even, uh, they entertain the dewatering as it's politely called of wetlands, again, for agricultural purposes. So, um, but that's, that's one thing that the DEC actually, I believe, and when I spoke to them, they encouraged it to be, hung up over wetlands. Um, I will ask Chris to sort of ask for, uh, discuss how they're hung because I'm not really sure about that. Um, the zoning on this, Tad, this is in a neighborhood district, I believe, correct? So the uses are allowed in neighborhood. When you look at parcel access, sometimes they don't have the zoning district caught up. So it still says rural, which is what um, they used to have. The other portion that I really can't answer that I'm gonna ask Chris to is also why the corral um, was located specifically where it was. I'm not positive of the answer, but I can also uh, answer that fences are allowed to be along uh, property borderlines. So as long as he has the fence on his site rather than incurring, uh, or yes, going onto your site, it would be legal. And uh, fences do not require building permits. So uh, that's something that we typically don't see uh, on site plans as well either. Chris, do you want to speak for a moment? And there you are. And tell us about why the corral is located where it's located. You're muted still, Chris. Sorry about that. Can you hear there me? There you now? go. Okay. Yes. Um, there's an entrance point right off of my driveway off of the house, This our site, my site plan, where I have easy access to that area. Um, Mr. Algazine sent a picture to you in his thing it's actually not where he placed it on his drawing. It's actually further to the right on the corner where it's in between two valleys where it's actually perfectly sculpted for, you know, the crowd. Plus it's, we have perfect trails and walking trails to that where it's nice flat and it's to alleviate his concerns about the wetland. It's actually further from the wetland than he was asking about. So it's, it's actually easier access for us we walk property, we look for it. It's a site that we pick that we think is 
it works for us. Any other question we that, that uh, he had that I couldn't answer? I'm not sure. How do you go about suspending the hives uh, over water? To, I think Mr. Algazin is worried about, from what I read in his thing about it falling and hitting somebody. Um, we're only going to be in some areas only three foot high off of a A-frame stand off the a base of a mature tree. We don't have to have any feet touching the ground. It can be attached to a um, um, a, a, a tree. We are also planning on putting a, uh, uh, a tension line across two mature trees and we can hang it over. Uh, it has to be higher in some areas, depending uh, seven and a half feet in case of uh, a bear. A bear can't reach past seven and a half feet. That was our process. So there's no problems with height or it being seen from the roadways. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a very easy structure to build. It's just a pulley line with a, uh, pretty much all you need is a clove hitch to hold it up. Well, yeah, to, to get to collect the honey isn't that hard if you're gonna be able to pull it back in. It's a, it's a pulley system where if you use counter levers, it's, uh, it's actually light, it's fairly light. Thank you. Um, anybody, anybody from the board have any more questions after you heard Mr. Algazine's comments? Mr. Algazine asked a question on chat. Oh, How I'm sorry. Uh, Chris, you can unmute yourself and, and ask another question. I had, while Chris was speaking, I just said, well, how heavy are these boxes? Three feet up can still be pretty high. Uh, I can't really envision how you'd approve a, a, a plan for something when somebody just says they're gonna have a pulley system for a box that we don't know how much it weighs. When a bee box is full of honey, um, I'm betting we're talking like something the size of a 55 gallon drum. I, I think we've all seen bee boxes before. Um, these things must be pretty heavy. And as for a bear can't reach seven and a half feet high, I've seen bears 30 feet high in trees. Um, they can climb. So first, do you know the approximate weight of the, uh, when they're full, Chris? I can't believe it's more than 60 pounds. I mean, it's a one, one foot box by one and a half foot. And um, the, if a bear climbed the trees, they still didn't get to the hives because they'd have to pull, they'd have to pull it in, correct? They would have to work it out in some way. I mean, every, uh, every beekeeper that I've spoken to, they keep theirs right on the ground. So if I build a stand, it is what it is. It's three, it's two feet. It's basically a table height um, stand that the boxes would be sitting on. Thank you. Um, do you have any other questions, Mr. Algazine? Just unmute yourself again, sorry. All right, each time someone has to unmute me. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. No, that's okay, it's, it's fine, I'm, I apologize. Um, there's an excellent example of an apiary on the Athanus farm location. Um, it was located, I think it's been relocated now, but it was located close enough to the road to be able to see. Now he has the, the solar farm in there. I think they moved it slightly. Um, but the reason why beekeepers keep their boxes on the ground is because they put electricity next to it and they put an electric fence around it to keep the bears out of them. Um, are you talking about that there's, <coughs> there's a solar farm on the west, uh, the west, the west side of, of 9G? Yeah, there was also a, a bee farm in there as well. He had uh, half a dozen to a dozen bee boxes in there surrounded by uh, an electric fence. I remember seeing the bee boxes. We walked the site, but there shouldn't be a solar farm on that site at all because it- Yes, there is. It. Oh, yeah. No, it's, pulled, it's, it's, on, it's on the east side of- it, The Athenas is on the east side, isn't it? Uh, That's where this yeah, is. East side. Yeah, I'm sorry. East side. Behind the billboards. Oh, right. That's right. Sorry. I had a brain moment there. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> you. 
Yes, we saw the we saw the the, the yes. The okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, his this so Mr. Athenas is, is actually used for commercial production. Okay. I believe that Mr. Peltier's is actually used for more of a therapeutic function. Am I right, Chris? Yeah. You're not really looking to make money, so we're gonna you know as it progresses, we're gonna go to production. We're gonna try to make a go of it. The site application clearly said he wanted to make money. Okay. Which is an agricultural and animal husbandry use. Correct. And Tad, you had something else that you put into the chat about. Yes, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that Mr. Pelletier did have a building permit for the home that is being constructed on the site and also an erosion sediment control permit application. Um, both are still active as he continues to construct. So that, in other words, there would be a requirement still for pre and post construction runoff to be the same. Not on a right. single family, not okay, on a good. single family on a prior. Yeah. So what is the ESC controlling actually? Um, disturbed soils being stabilized. Okay. The amount of area that's disturbed needs to be under a certain acreage and he's under that. Anything else from um, you, Mr. Algazi? And I apologize if you have to unmute yourself again. Okay. And any, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. And by the way, very well written letter. We don't always get things like that. <laughs> I'll be honest, my first thought was next time we have uh, an opening in the planning board, maybe I should ask you. You did some research clearly. Uh, I was told to by your excellent uh, recording secretary who. Uh, well, it, it, it helps us shape what you're really talking about when you quote sections of code as well. Do you live in Hyde Park? I do, sir. Aha, then maybe you can be on the planning board at some point. Just keep this in mind if you ever have a free time because you seem to have a knack for it. So thank you very much. Thank um, you. So board members, uh, we heard some comments tonight, but I think that some of them have been answered. Uh, and I'm not sure if we really are ever going to know how this operates, but in looking at this or in thinking about it, we, if we approved, say, an actual farm operation, we're not always looking to see how, say, a pulley system would work or other things necessarily work. So I guess some of this is going out in a leap of faith and trusting that the DEC, because they monitor some of this, would uh, be safe. So uh, do the board members still want to close the public hearing and consider taking action in, uh, at the next meeting, but leaving time open for more public comment? Yes, no. Chris says yes. Rob? Yes. Ann says yes. Can I make yes. a okay. quick comment, Michael, about the, the bears? Yes, please. I don't know. I just I just kind of think like, you know, I've seen bears do pretty crazy things and they definitely can reach up and rip stuff down. But I, I don't know if that's really in our purview. If the applicant wants to spend his money and time creating these and they get ripped down by bears, you know, that's that's kind of him on him. And uh, I just don't know that that's something we should really concern ourselves with. Thank you. It, the, the applicants do proceed with some risk in many cases like this. Um, I d have not walked the area back there. It's a very large, large, large site over hundred acres. So I'm going to presume that there's bears. Um, although being located next to a gun club it, that might tend to mitigate the presence of a lot of bears because they might want to avoid the sounds uh, of rifles. I'm not sure. But at any rate, that's a great comment. Thank you. So uh, may I get a motion to close the public hearing, but with the proviso that seven days are allowed for more written comments? I'll make that motion, Chris Oliver. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Um, Mr. Peltier, we'll see you at the next meeting, but we will allow more time for written comment in case there's more after people see this. Okie doke. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Algazine. It was nice meeting you. Um, the next item is continued public hearing. This is for carriage trip. Well, we're not calling it Crofton Muse again. This public hearing is actually on a request to extend the site plan deadlines for construction to require approved plan. In the interim, we've been working with the applicants and they have presented a new proposal. I just want to show everybody today that I picked up that is approximately mm, seven inches full. 
It hasn't been stamped yet. Ted is still reviewing it. But at any rate, the discussion tonight isn't really on the new plan, except to say that it's relevant because this is showing that the applicants are proceeding in good faith so we could continue to extend the uh, deadlines. Make it a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, motion to open, Rob Waters. Thank you, I will second. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 The public hearing is open and we have the applicants <laughs> present. Mr. Kaufman, take it away. Uh, hi, everybody, uh, Luke Kaufman for the applicant. Um, we're uh, here tonight, we have, uh, we're seeking to have the uh, extension of the existing approval uh, uh, approved while the board contemplates you know, uh, reviews uh, certain um, uh, modifications to the original site plan, which will include a reduction in the amount of units, a reduction in the amount of disturbed area. Uh, uh, pretty much the layout of the property will remain the same, but for, uh, you know, the area where we have eliminated the units and there are certain, uh, engineering um, uh, parts of the uh, plan that we submitted that, you know, uh, address those modifications. We have submitted uh, information so that the board can be comfortable uh, continuing the see seeker designation. And uh, so, you know, we would like to, uh, we can't have a substantive discussion on our modifications, but as, as uh, Mr. Dupree points out, we've made a significant effort in, in order for the uh, board and its consultants to uh, review our modifications. It looks pretty, com it looks like a really complete application. I have to say, congratulations. Um, I just started um, skimming it, I just started skimming it, but the rest of the board hasn't seen it yet because it hasn't been stamped in, as I said. Um, so at any rate, as I said before, the way this process is working, it appears it will be ultimately amending the current site plan application, which would then obviate the need for us to continue to grant extensions because we would have new conditions because of the amended, uh, the changes in the amended site plan. Let me go to consultants first. Um, Mr. Sotero, anything to add? No, no, not at this time. Ms. Franson? Not at this time, thank you. I think so, Ms. Polidoro? Nope. No comment. Ms. Moss? You're still muted. There we go. Uh, no, just that it is a substantive package and we had uh, an offline call last week. Um, I think that was very helpful, uh, but the, there are still some final determinations that need to be made. And I will As be I working on those. Okay, so you're gonna make, you're gonna, you're going to submit them in formal written comments? Yes. Okay. doke. And then once we know that, then that we should be able to show us how to proceed forward into the next step to review the application. That's the right way to put it. Okay, board members, any comments? I know you, this is still on just the extension because you haven't seen the new plans yet, sorry. Um, Cynthia just let me, Cynthia let me remove them, but it's the right today, <laughs> unstamped. So I may have signed away some portion oh. of my future, my future life, who knows? Um, so, and there was no one signed up to the public comment here. So there being none, when would you like to adjourn this public hearing to, um, Lou? I, I, it's more a matter of, uh, because there are, you know, several reports, uh, the, the bridge report and you know, the plans are not as, you know, big a review because like, you know, like I said, it's really more of a reduction in the existing uh, uh, plan. So, I'm thinking if the board is okay and if Tad can uh, uh, get to it and if she has any questions, then I, I don't know, a, a month might be a benefit more than enough. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, I might just add that we, while this public hearing is pending, it's gonna take the board some time to review the new submission. So you might wanna choose a longer date so that we can dig into the what? new submission and review it and, and get to it. Yes, an here's what I will there. suggest. If we have a public hearing, but we're not ready, then everybody has to assemble and you get charged. If we set the public hearing date out, like say to May, <coughs> excuse me, we can workshop this. 
We just won't be, it won't be, in other words, it won't be public comment, but we can workshop this anytime, the new application, if that makes okay. sense. You can also schedule a public hearing on the new application, I believe. If no, <laughs> not until it's complete. Not until, yes, Kat has sent it to us. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. But I'm, I'm saying that continuing the hearing on this, <coughs> on this existing application is not impacting the review of the right. new application. Right. Does that make sense, Lou? It, it does. Um, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, if we put this over, it, it's more a matter of uh, uh, you guys and the consultants digesting what we have. But again, it, it, it's voluminous, but it really, you know. We're, we're, listen, I'm familiar with almost all of it. So is the rest of the board. And we'll that, that, that's my point. So yeah, if nothing news the, Right. So if February is a little too soon, how about March? No, what I'm trying to say is we can just schedule these for workshop and just workshop them through with the board. We don't have to have, look how cute. We don't have to have a public hearing. <laughs> yeah, it's just so cute. She's standing on the table. I somehow knew that was a girl because of the way you're uh, allowing her to move around on your dining table. Yes, she's a cutie. Um, in other words, I think it'd be easier for us because what may wind up happening is we may wind up actually not extending this if we open up a new public hearing on the new application. This would just supersede the old. Does that make sense? Victoria, am I saying that correctly? Uh, I, yes, there's two, Lou, there's two pending applications. Right. I extend by setting the hearing out on this one, five months, it doesn't impact the board's ability to review the one that you are hoping that Tad will stamp in soon. So are you suggesting that we might want to uh, put the extension application out? Yes. Then we can workshop the new application. And if we set a public hearing for the new application, then that actually supersedes this. That right. makes any sense because it'd be we would have an amended site application. So oh, all, okay. all, the, all the dates would start over again. So you'd have a year in which to start, right. two years in which to, to complete all over again for the new application. Okay, so are we not voting on the extension tonight, but we're gonna put it off until May? Is that what the suggestion is? Right, because we have a new application, we wanna process that first. Uh, okay, so the, that- you, you will recall we, they cannot grant the extension because all of your permits have expired. So, this is a right. workaround. Yes. Okay. So, this, this is just a workaround. All right. So, we can work around it as you suggested. So, with the extension, all right, we can put that off into the future while we deal with the real. Right. Right. You know, but <laughs> how long does the, do we have a hearing on the revisions, on the modifications? Well, how's that work? We will, whenever there's an amended site plan, we have to open a public hearing unless Ms. Moss suggests we waive the public hearing. That's the only way that can work because the board can't waive public hearings. It's, it's required to hold them for all site plan amendments. So but Tad can recommend that we waive one if necessary or that if she believes that it's uh, valid. But we would not really set a public hearing on the new application until we're pretty far along and are we, you have a good idea that it's you know in the shape that could be approved. That makes any sense. Okay, so when do you think that uh, determination can be? Well, made? first, first, Tad has to make the first determination before it gets to the board. So that's really up to her. But as soon as she does, you'll receive it. All the board will receive it, and then uh, once she makes that determination, then all the board members get the plans, and we can get you scheduled. I mean, I'll schedule it as soon as we get the application. Okay, so you won't have to stay on top of it. In other words, as soon as it's stamped and we all receive it, then two I may weeks not after have that, to we'll stay on top of it. Well, <laughs> I may not have to stay on top of it, but I get let me rephrase it. that. Let me rephrase that. I'll make uh, sure of staying on top of the scheduling. There you go. Um, so, what if we um, give you time, guys, times to digest what we proposed, and maybe we don't have to schedule a workshop tonight. But I'd like to have one in, in March, if possible. So I'd like to have one in March, too. But we, I need to get Tad first to release the files to everybody else. I mean, I'm going to have to bring mine back in to have them stamped. I just wanted to get a start on familiarizing myself with what the changes are and what all the new materials you've submitted. You know, okay. me, the overachiever. Yeah. So with Tad, she had uh, Tad, you had mentioned some things that you were, uh, you know, you were uncertain of because they weren't maybe as definitive on the set of drawings we gave you, such as. Uh, the the lot line which uh, is not going to change so maybe we need to 
at least to give a, an existing conditions or the survey which shows the lot lines. There's no application nor will there be to change those lot lines. And uh, if you had a couple other questions, so maybe uh, we can reach out to you and after you've had a time to uh, um, uh, recognize what it is you need in order to move this forward. So I, I'll reach out to you maybe at the end of the week. Is that a, a reasonable amount of time? It's Wednesday. So that gives you all of one a day and a half. I mean, that's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> You can reach out anytime you want. I'm not sure I'm going to have it done. I've got okay. piles of applications that have to be reviewed. Right. Okay. So um, we'll try and get it into place where uh, 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 Michael, Mr. Dupree is. You can say Michael. And by the way, I'll stay on top of that too. So will Cynthia. Cynthia is right. a good taskmaster. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes. No, she's, she's an excellent her. taskmaster, believe me. So. Yes. I, I, I want just, her to be that, that way. It, it, if I'm, if I'm dragging my heels, I want her to go. Tch, tch, tch. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So then um, we're going to put off the public hearing, which is about the extension uh, until you, <coughs> for the time you guys suggest. And in the interim, I will work with uh, Tad and then um, uh, my and the board and then the board. And, yeah. To get in front of you guys in an informal uh, yep. thing. So, so I said work, workshop is the best way to do this. So, right. Okay. And I'll make a motion to adjourn the public hearing to May 18th, 2022. I'll second that, Rob Waters. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 That was quick and fast. Thank you. Um, so we'll see, Lou will be in touch, but as soon as you, if you want to contact Tad, just contact Tad, but we'll be in touch as well. Right. And if okay. you get my call, I'll know the answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Thanks. Have a nice night. Thank and by the both. way, what's the name of, what's the name of your dog? Oh, that one's Stella. You didn't see Lola, uh, Layla. Is she a rat terrier or is she Chihuahua? Uh, she, or? Uh, she's a Chihuahua. The other one's a uh, some kind of terrier. I don't know. She's a <laughs> terrier. You know, I got her. You know, from a, a foster. So she's the very nice and humane of you to be doing what you're doing there with the dogs. I can see they love you. So you're a good, yeah. you're a good dog parent. Yeah, nice to know. Fond of me. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful Thank Chihuahua. You. Yep. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> um, that's right. Bonnie, Bonnie loves chihuahuas. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then she would love this one because it's a, it's a chihuahua. All Gorgeous. The aspect of it. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye now. The next item on the agenda is key construction. Um, I'm recused from this application. And as a reminder, Vice Chair Dexter uh, had to be away tonight because of a family situation. So uh, the board members who are left We'll need to elect a temporary chair, and I believe Mr. Oliver has graciously volunteered to do so. So I will exit. Um, just someone give me, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a text when it's time for me to come back. Okay. I'll text you. Thank you. Hi, Kelly. How are you tonight? Hi. Thank you. I'm very well. Um, uh, we're here tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. Chris, do we have to vote you in? Yes, I was just oh. going to say. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Make a motion that Chris Oliver is temporary chair. I second I, that. Uh, Rob Waters. Aye. All in favor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a group effort. One, two, three. Okay. Unanimous. Right, Thank you. you. Would you like me to start? Sure. Okay. I wasn't sure if you had an introduction. So we're here um, tonight just kind of regrouping and coming back to the board. Um, the last time that we were before you, the board had really concluded their review generally, I'll say, um, with respect to Seeker. The two outstanding items that, well, three outstanding items that remained were uh, the permit from DOT, which we do not have any communication back from DOT. The permit from DEC, um, I checked with Mike Nowicki earlier and we do not have communication back from DEC. And lastly was the area variances from the ZBA. And of course, everyone knows this is a um, coordinated seeker review of this project. And the ZBA is not able to issue their area variances or their decision, decision with respect to the area variances until this board completes their seeker review. We did, however, appear before the ZBA um, to gather and garner their comments relative to the seeker review of this project so that this board could um, be allowed to take action. I believe the ZBA provided you with their comments, which broadly covered um, stormwater 
I'll just broadly cover that. Um, I know you re had received a letter from them. Our office, or sorry, LRC um, group provided a response to that, just explaining the um, stormwater and the erosion sediment control um, that will be put in place. The town's uh, engineer, um, Clark Patterson Lee, Pete Terra, also submitted a response to this board summarizing similarly um, how we're handling stormwater and erosion control. And so at this point, um, I think that that probably concludes any comments that we're gonna get from the ZBA. So we were hoping tonight to answer, answer any additional questions that you have and to um, possibly address the seeker action on this project. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start with my consultants. Do you have anything else to add, Pete? Um, no, um, I did, um, as uh, Kelly said, I did issue a, a letter to the ZBA and copied uh, the planning board in regards to their question on um, storm water and uh, potential impacts to um, wetlands. Um, so I also had commented on their uh, seeker um, resolution that Bonnie had prepared. Um, so I think that everything is all set to go uh, on that from um, my end. And as far as, um, you know, our review of uh, any of our final, uh, final comments on the site plan, which will come, which, uh, you know, conditional approval will come at some other, some other point. We really, uh, I think I just had two very, very uh, minor, um, you know, comments, which I'm sure that they'll uh, address after they get through uh, the ZBA process. So, that's pretty much it from our end. Uh, I don't have any issues with the seeker um, resolution and um, uh, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Bonnie, anything to add? No, not really. Um, as I went through the preparation of the negative declaration and the findings on behalf of the planning board, there were some minor uh, you know, revisions that could be made to the site plan, uh, but otherwise, uh, at this point, the planning board has uh, a draft of the part two and the part three uh, uh, full environmental assessment form. It also has a narrative which describes uh, a summary of uh, what is leading the board to a determination of uh, non-significance or a negative declaration. And then uh, there is a resolution that's been drafted if the planning board desires to make that determination this evening. Uh, so other than that, I'll you know, um, let you handle it, Chris, in terms of how you wanna proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Moss, anything to add? No, no, I don't. Okay, thank you. Do any of my colleagues have anything to add? No. no. Okay. Um, Not at this time. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing, please? So moved, Victoria King. I don't think I can second that, right? Uh, I can second it. Rob Waters? Thank, Thank you. you, Rob. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there any one from the public to speak on this? I have had no one sign up. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. And can I get a motion to adjourn the public hearing for key construction offices and storage units to March 2nd of 2022? I'll make that motion, Ann Weiser. I'll second. Sorry. I'll sorry. Thank you, Victoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. With that being done, has everyone had a chance to review and accept the draft part two and three of the EAF? Yes. Yes. No yes. questions or concerns? No. no. Okay. And I have the resolution to adopt for adopting secret determination of significance, negative declaration for key construction, resolution number. 2020-30A, whereas, 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 whereas. Now therefore be it resolved that the planning board hereby determines the proposed action key construction site plan as proposed will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. The findings are set forth in the negative declaration. 
And I think that's all I have. Is there a second part to that? Nope. Can I get a uh, second on that? Are you seeing, I'm sorry, are you seeing the screen? Because I did try and put it up, but uh, my screen doesn't seem to be yes. sharing. Oh, you can't yeah, see I, it? I, 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 I read it, yeah. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that it was available for um, the public as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, no We're waiting no, no. for a second. I'll second. Thank you, Ann. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion is carried. Text the chairman. Okay, there. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. I just wanted to say thank you. No problem. Thank you, Kelly. Um, we'll go back to the planning or to the ZBA, and um, hopefully, then we'll be back before you in March, and um, we can clean up some of those issues that Pete and Bonnie had mentioned, and um, hopefully, we'll finish this one up. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sorry, I'm trying to get the chairman back. All right. And let's unmute Mr. Martin. There we go. Good evening, Ernie. How are you doing? And here is the chairman. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Tori. Thank you. And thank you, Chris, All for right. taking over. Bye. Good night. Bye, Tori. Good night, Tori. Next item on the agenda is a resolution for Holt property lot line alteration. We held a public hearing and closed it. We did not receive any comments throughout the public hearing nor after we closed the public hearing. And it looks as though I'm introducing this resolution. Nice. Resolution 2021-11A, January 19, 2022. Whereas, 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 whereas. Now therefore be it resolved. The planning board hereby adopts a negative declaration finding that the project as proposed will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts and the draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. Be it further resolved, the planning board hereby grants final subdivision approval to the subdivision plat and authorizes the chair or his authorized designee to sign the subdivision plat after compliance with the following conditions. One, payment of all fees in escrow. Two, Dutchess County Department of Behavioral and Community Health permission to file. Three, approval by the attorney to the planning board and the town engineer of the following deeds with legal descriptions, together with an undertaking from the applicant's attorney to record the deeds after the subdivision plat is filed. One, a deed from Colmer and Wagner to World of Tomorrow LLC conveying parcel C. Two, deed from World of Tomorrow LLC to Colmer and Wagner conveying parcel D and merging with the lands of Colmer and Wagner. Three, the deed from Mary G. Holt and Floyd Holt, Jocelyn R. Thiessen, trustee and Rachel S. Thiessen conveying parcel F to be merged with the lands of Jocelyn R. Thiessen or Thiessen, trustee and Rachel S. Thiessen, trustee. Four, deed from Mary G. Holt and Floyd Holt to World of Tomorrow LLC conveying parcel B. And five, the deed from World of Tomorrow LLC to World of Tomorrow LLC merging parcels A, B, and C. Any comment or questions on that? May I hear a second? Second, Rob Waters. Thank you, Rob. Any further discussion? I do want to compliment Victoria on that application, on that resolution. I know it was complicated to piece together all the conveyances that went everywhere. So there being no other discussion, everyone in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Martin, you're good to go. We can okay, get you a copy I, of the resolution. Will you, uh, will that be emailed to me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. And have Thank a you. good evening. Have a good you evening. Too. Bye, Ernie. Bye-bye. Next item is we are in the current process of reviewing a minor subdivision that's styled Small O'Malley at 148 Cream Street. It's a five lot subdivision. Um, we believe we're at the point that it could be, we're, it would be behoove us to set the public hearing. We spoke to the applicants and they would like to set it for March 16th, 2022, which is a little bit different date than what you may have in front of you. March 16th was what their engineer uh, thought might be the uh, most desirable for him to take care of his work. 
The reason why is because if you'll recall, they need to do some archeological work, uh, one of which is a literature search, but the archeologists they've hired seems to think they should be doing some soil sample tests too, and they wanna wait till it warms up. So may I get a motion to set the public hearing uh, for March 16th, 2022? I'll make that motion, Rob Waters. I'll second it, Chris Oliver. Thank you, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is a site plan waiver for a generator located at 42 Windmill Road. We have the recommendation from the zoning administrator. If you'll recall, uh, Rob, I don't think that since you're newer to the board, there's a condominium development um, or townhouse yeah, development, nice. one of the two townhouse that's at the end of Greenfields, which is a, a regular single family neighborhood that's very far to the east. It's off, it's between Cream Street and South Quaker Lane. So as part of this, the whenever they need a generator, because that requires a building permit and site plan, unfortunately, each per, each one of these individuals has to come for a site plan waiver because they it's going to go actually on the site. So um, these are these are visible and they're not the prettiest, but we don't believe that anyone should have to go through the full site plan process just for something that they need, like a generator. So that's why. And I believe Mr. Oliver is going to introduce this. Yes, I am. Uh, resolution number 2022-01, whereas a request for a site plan waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Christine Sasser to install a standby generator on an existing townhome and whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved. The Town of Hyde Park Planning Board hereby waives site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the request for the waiver of the site plan received by the Planning Department on January 8th, 2022. I will second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda is, there is no next item on the agenda, I believe. We're not working on the resolution tonight for Fall Kill, right? Because they still have meets and bounds, Pete, that you're working through? Uh, yes. Um, I think no one was in contact with uh, Peter Scott today. Uh, or if not, he's going to be in contact with him tomorrow. He, uh, we went over a couple things today. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is, but, you know, we'll get there, I think. Okay. So for the rest of the board, um, 64 Falkill or Highbury Estates, and looking at some of the conditions, now they've submitted a conditions book. Two of the conditions that are listed on the subdivision are actually applied to the site. And I'm sorry, for the, yes, for the, you Wait, got which it. way am I going? You got I it. Right. That <laughs> they crossed, the conditions were crossed because we had two applications. There's actually, both for subdivision and site plan, one, both conditions are satisfied by the other. So we need to amend that resolution and Victoria started it. So we'll have that up for the next meeting, but we couldn't quite get to it today. Um, if I could just ask Ted something quick, Ted, um, did Please. Peter submit Mylar's again? Yes, but he's going to have to replace one because it's going to have the table of the uh, dimensions and directions, uh, okay. the meets and bounds. All right, because uh, one of the things that uh, no one was going to talk to him about was that there had to be a, a few things added to, um, you know, the plat in regards to, you know, like tie, tie courses for the meets and bounds to make it so that a surveyor can understand it. So I, I wasn't sure if there was other things that he had to, you know, to change anyways. So, but it seems, but it seems like he does. So we can, we can talk about it again offline. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be around tomorrow morning. Right. I'll talk to you. Remember, Peter doesn't work on Fridays anymore, Tad. Yep. So make sure it's tomorrow. Tomorrow's okay, no Thursday. <laughs> There being no, well, we, you and I have a busy day tomorrow too. I know, and I have a ZBA agenda. I know. <laughs> so, all right, make it a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion, Chris Oliver. Thank and you. And I'll second it, Rob Waters. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Peter, for organizing this. A reminder, I won't be here at the next, I don't think I'll be here at the next meeting. I, I would need to be zooming in from the Caribbean and that just seems cruel to myself. Yeah, so, that's cruel. No, yeah. that's not cruel to you. That's cruel to us. Yeah, boo. -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be waving my pina coladas, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. All <laughs> On right. the beach. Yeah. Good night.
At any rate, so I will see you. I'll see everybody uh, in a month. In the meantime, uh, good luck at the next meeting. Thank you. Enjoy your trip, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Be Enjoy. Be safe. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.